Hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today I wanted to show you my very first attempt at a master board. Uh, I'm in several junk journaling um, groups on Facebook and this word pops up quite a bit. So I decided to research it a little bit and I really love the um, concept of it. And I wanted to go a step further in my video today. I want to make my master board, um, decorate it, decoupage it, so setting everything together. Then I want to cut it and use it and show you how I use it. So a lot of the videos that I've watched, which there aren't really that many, especially a vintage type master board, there aren't really that many that um, go through the whole process and then show you what they do with it afterward. So um, I wanted to do that in this video. I am thinking, since we're using mostly scraps on a master board, or I will be using mostly scraps on a master board, and I think that's the general idea behind this, I think if this goes well, and you all really like it, appreciate it, or whatever, I think I might be doing one of these a month because it seems like a great concept to use up a lot of scraps on one piece and then be able to use those collaged, collaged scraps <laughs> on um, lots of other projects or in lots of other projects. So we might be doing a monthly master board. Let me know what you think about that. Monthly video um, all about master board and, um, or as I would like to call it instead of master board, brain dump board <laughs> or a scrap dump board <laughs> because that's what it's gonna in turn be in the very end is lots of scraps collaged together and made into something beautiful. So, um, I've gotten quite a few little scraps together. Then I have these two book pages and I have uh, some things up here at the top of the screen, top of my desk, whatever, that I'm thinking that I want to use. Um, I want this to kind of be um, rose, themed, so the flower, rose themed, um, let's see, I was going to look, I should have looked before, but I was going to look and see if I had a stamp, because I would like to stamp a little bit on this, and I was looking to see if I have a rose stamp, um, probably going to turn out that I do not because I've never been that big into florals until now. Um, oh, well, we'll look. Oh, look at here. I think I might have found one. These are all my little beauty ones. And look, that's got a rose in it. It's kind of a collage in itself stamp. So I will use that one. All right, so my stamp sets, if anybody wants to go along with me and make their own master board, you certainly can. Um, I will tell you just a few things that I have out that I'm going to use in mine. I'm going to use stamps. So I have the Tim Holtz Field Notes stamp set. I have a little, um, what is this one, Prima stamp set that's got a rose in it. It's collage. And then this is a like dictionary words stamp set. So that's my stamps. I will be using, I'm gonna scoop that back. I will be using my stays on ink just because I'll be decoupaging with collage page. If you don't have this, we have this in the store, scrapbookingwithme.com. All links are in the description box below if you have any questions. Um, 
we have this in the shop and it is the matte finish so this will not be shiny when I get done and I love that but I will be using stays on when, when I stamp just so that it stays really well um let's see get my stamp block out I might get the bigger one out too since some of those are a little bigger okay um, I might use some sprays. That's the black soot and then the oxide vintage photo. So that's my sprays over there. Um, then you'll just need a couple of bigger pieces of scrap. So I'm using, for that, I'm using the uh, book pages here. And then the rest is just going to fill in. And um, then you'll need a few little die cuts, focal points. Um, I've got a few little focal points, but I think I'll be getting some bigger ones, maybe a bird or something, some type of something bigger focal point uh, before we seal it, okay? Um, I won't be using any type of bling or anything like that on this um, because we will be cutting it up and I want to make sure that I can cut it really well. Um, once we start putting the pieces into journals or whatever we use them in, uh, of course you could add some dimensional stuff to it then. Um, I will be inking edges. So I'm using walnut stain. Um, oh. I'll be using a glue stick to put them down. Uh, if you use um, like a liquid glue, like Barely Arts or Art Glitter Glue, um, it tends to pucker, especially the really thin stuff. So I'm gonna be using glue stick. And then of course the decoupage will um, seal in all the rest. Let's see, what else? Oh, I'm starting with eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and this is 110 pound weight, um, because I'm using mostly paper to go on top. Now, if you have mostly cardstock uh, scraps, you'll want to use just a regular piece of copy paper, just so it's not too thick um, whenever you finish, and you can easily cut it up. I also have this, and this is not scraps, but I might be using just a couple of pages from it just because it's got this beautiful rose on it. This is a digital kit from Betty's Custom Design on Etsy. And Betty is one of our longtime customers at scrapbookingwithme.com. And she has some of the most gorgeous, gorgeous distances. <laughs> <laughs> digital kits you will ever see. This one is called Ledger and Lace. Um, it's got like 20 pages to it. It is gorgeous, gorgeous kit. So I'll just go through that. But I'm thinking I'm just going to use this page. This might be one of my little focal points, okay? But I was just going to show you what this kit looks like. And I will link her um, Etsy shop below with the direct link to this kit because you need this kit. It is just gorgeous. Now I have printed a couple of these out twice. So there's gonna be more than 20 that I show you, but there are 20 sheets in this kit. And on this one, my printer started running out of ink. That's the only reason why it's purple on that one end. Yours will not be purple as long as you've got enough ink in your printer. There's another one with beautiful roses on it. Look at that. See, I don't know which one. They're both gorgeous. So I'm just going to put that one there and make my decision a little harder later. And let's get, there's some of that lace, ledger and lace. There's more roses. Gorgeous. Oh, look at that rose in the background of that one. And then more white or yellow roses in the background of that one. I mean, y'all, this is a gorgeous kit. And you could print these front and back if you wanted to and use them as um, 
journal pages themselves and just put little pockets or something on the pages. Gorgeous kit, Betty. Love this one. So I do have that printed out. Uh, and then I'll have like maybe some little tickets that I'll put on. Uh, this one has some roses in there somewhere. So I will dig those out. Um, and then I have some of these washi stickers and I think maybe this one's got a rose in it somewhere. Yes, it does. So I'm going to do the, um, florals on that. So I will keep these close at hand and let's get started. So I went ahead and inked the edges of these two sheets off camera, most of these two. Um, I just wanted to show you if you did not see previous videos of how I ink thin paper pieces. I put them up against um, the edge of a ledger book and just ink them that way. They're a lot easier to ink that way. So I have this idea. I'm gonna leave that ledger book close at hand because I'll need that for quite a few of the other uh, scrap pieces. Uh, I have this idea that I want this one here in this corner and this one in this corner and then I will fill in everywhere else. Um, I thought this was a cute thing. I found the rose uh, dictionary page, so rose, flower, uh, color de rosa, uh, de color de rosa. So <laughs> it's got the, um, I think this is a Spanish English dictionary. Yeah. So it has the Spanish um, definition of rose on this page. So I'm going to be careful not to cover that up because I really love that. Since I want this to be a rose themed master board or brain dump board, scrap dump board, whatever we're going to call it. I'm going to drink of my coffee there. All right. Now I'm going to take my lid off of my glue stick. We do have these in the shop. If you do not have a really good glue stick, we have those in the shop and we have multiple customers that buy multiple glue sticks at a time. Um, I think I was filling an order a few days ago and the lady had bought six and I was like, you go girl. Yes, stock up on those glue sticks. We all need adhesive and it is not fun when you run out of adhesive in the, especially in the middle of a project or when you think of something that you want to do and want to make and then all of a sudden, ha, ah, I'm out of adhesive, I can't do that. I'll have to order more. So she was very, very smart in ordering six glue sticks at one time. All right, so we're getting that one down. Love that. And then this one, this dictionary page is very, very thin. So I'm going to be as careful as possible not to rip it or um, make it gather. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to put this at this corner. Okay, then I have some straw paper that I'm thinking I might tear. I had someone uh, question, what is straw paper? Well, to the best of my knowledge, straw paper <clears throat> is um, materials and it could be natural materials also that are... Um, smashed together, for lack of better terms, and pressed together to make paper. So it's almost like the consistency of construction paper. Um, and it is not milled 
as finely as regular paper. So it does have texture to it, and you can see the little grains um, of different materials that have been used in the paper. So to the best of my knowledge, that is um, an accurate description of straw paper. All right, I don't wanna cover that up because it says rows, so I'm going to go that far with that paper. And I will go ahead and ink that too. I think the thing that's gonna take the longest with this project is inking. Now, if you are not an inker, if you don't like inking edges, um, then your project is gonna go a lot faster. You won't have to worry about this step. But I love to ink, I love the dimension it gives my projects. So pretty much everything that I do is gonna be inked. Unless I am participating in a clean and simple challenge of some kind, that would be the only time <laughs> that I wouldn't be inking the edges. Now see how that gives that dimension. It gives it that vintage feel. I really like that. And then I'm thinking about just doing a little bitty strip of something right there to cover up the white behind that. All right, and then it doesn't matter if you get adhesive on the tops of any of this stuff because in the end, you're going to seal it with decoupage. Okay. And that over to that edge and all the way to the top. Um, I had someone say, I don't understand collage. You're covering up everything you're doing. No, not covering up everything. Um, but yes, you're covering up a few things that you do. Um, <laughs> I, I like collaging. Um, if you don't, don't worry about it. Don't do it. But, I mean, you got to give it a try. Give it a try, and if you don't like it, great. Don't, you know, don't, don't do it again. But I say that once you start covering up stuff, I mean, everything that you see here is not something that's vital to this project. So, you know, I like, pick out a few things that you like and like Old Testament, I would, just because I'm a, I'm a believer, I would like to keep that visible. Um, just pick out a few things that you like and you don't have to use every bit of every piece of everything you ever use. <laughs> That's my philosophy anyway. So, um, not to downgrade anybody. I mean, if you don't like something, by all means, don't do it. Um, but for those of us that do, you know, we're still going to do it. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I just got a little piece of that paper from a um, digital. I think that's a My Porch Prints digital. And I put some more ink at the bottom of this just to um, dirty it up a little bit. I've got some ink dyed paper that has a blue hue to it. And I think I will tear a little bit of that to add. I have got to do some more ink dyeing and tea dyeing. I found out the other day when I was trying to add some pages to a journal that I'm very, very low on pages. So I've got to get that done. All right, I want to keep that. I want to keep that. So I might add that there. Don't worry, I will get to the white part. Okay, and then maybe some of this 
see that. I got some paper bag that I'm just tearing and I might add it there. I like that. Let's ink that. I'll need my pad to do that. So right now we're just getting the background done. We're getting um, all the white of the um, cardstock covered. And then we'll start adding some focal points, die cuts, stamping, stuff like that to fill in all the chinks and get it looking more full. And then I'll show you how I use it. Um, yep, right in there. And we're gonna cover up some of that straw paper, but we'll have some peeking out the other way too. So glue stick. And then make sure that we're covering up all that white there. And then I'm gonna cut off any excess, of course, that is at the tops, bottom, sides, wherever. And I really like this little piece of scrap that I had left from a printable of some kind. And I want to use all of it, so I might do that and then I'll just have that little bottom peak that will be hanging off. I like the idea of using two or three bigger pieces and then filling in with my smaller scraps. Um, it just gives it a little bit more of a cohesive feel and not a, oh, she just threw a bunch of junk together and look, it looks awful kind of look. <laughs> You know, I never want my look to be awful. Okay, if you ever have any that come up on the side, just kind of lift it up and do it again. I like this. It says togetherness at the top of this. That's cute. So let's take that off. All right. This one's a little thicker, so it'll ain't quite well without the book. Okay. And then my glue stick. So that's all this is, guys, is a bunch of glue sticking and <laughs> oh, my randomness. I think I will pull it a little further this way and then just have a small little piece that covers that up and I've still got, yep, that's good. We'll just do a tiny piece of something to cover that up. Let's go with another piece of this. Let's see if we can get the word postcard in there somewhere. And do a little bit more tearing here. Oh yeah. That works. Okay. Ink those edges. And then get that pulled up where it got stuck. Make sure my rose definition is still showing, and it is. Okay. And then we've got this bottom section. And when you are looking at this, you look, oh yeah, you just need one strip. Don't look at it like that. Look at it as if, let's piece this buddy together. Um, we don't have to use just one strip and be done. That would be boring. So let's um, add quite a bit of different stuff down here just to get some more interest to the piece. I'm gonna dirty this up just a little bit more and I'm gonna ink, or ink, yeah, I just inked. 
I'm gonna put glue stick on the back and then I'm gonna make this so it covers up that corner so I don't have to do another little piece of something for the corner. But then I'm gonna pull it up enough that I use quite a bit of it. And then I get those little speckles in there too. All right, and then maybe, let's look here. And all of our other little scraps. I like that, but I don't want to cover up. So let's go around the edge of this. Let's use that. This is just some old scrap paper that I had in my stash from years and years ago. When I found it, I was like, wow, when did I even get that? Probably 2000s or earlier. When I was going through trying to find scraps, I really found some old, <laughs> old, old stuff. Okay, and then maybe just some I don't want to cover up too much of that, but I do like this torn craft cardstock. Yeah, that works. Do that there. And then it looks like maybe we'll just need a little piece below that, or maybe two little pieces. We'll see. Now, glue stick is not going to work as well on cardstock as it does on paper, but, I mean, it still works until you can get the decoupage on. Okay, I'm just wanting to cover up the edge of that. Not really anything other than that. Okay, and then let's do some tearing on it also and see if we can't get... Since it's two different looks on the same paper, that works as far as covering it up. I think I might do that just so I can get that look over there. Yep, I like that. I'm going to just ink the tops. And then I'm going to wrestle it in to this piece. And then put this piece down some more. There we go. And then get my sticky scissors. For those that do not know, I use a different scissor for different things. And this one is for when there is possible sticky substance where I am cutting so I don't ruin my really good Tim Holt scissors. So I'm just going along that cardstock base. Okay, so now we have this really big space over here, a bigger space over here that needs a little bit more um, collaging things done to it. So I'm going to start off with this um, kind of dictionary type stamp here. And I'm going to get my stays on ink. I'm going to try this without even putting it on a stamp block. Yep, I like that. And maybe up here toward the top. Cool. All right, and then... Let's see. We need, I think, some stamping here and here. And I think this, I'm gonna go with this 
smaller rows and put that here somewhere so that I can still keep Old Testament wording right there. Let's put this stamp up. Let's get that focal point. Hmm. Do I want to tear it or do I want to fussy cut it? That is the question. I think fussy cut. So, um, I'm going to show you just real quickly. You know, I'm just going around the edges. Uh, if I want to cut off a leaf or two, I will. But I'll go in a little bit, but I won't go, I mean, all detailed all the way in since this has so many leaves and things. And then I'm going to go off camera and cut off, or cut off, cut out the rest of it. So I do not bore you to tears trying to fussy cut this entire image out. Okay, so I got it fussy cut just to my liking and I'm going to ink a few of the little edges. I'm not gonna get too detailed in my inking here because it's a beautiful image without too much inking. And I'm going to put this really close to my Old Testament wording, but not all the way to the bottom, because if I do, I'm covering up. Um, I will add a little something here um, around that, just so that we can get rid of that definite edge of that. And then I'm gonna come in and stamp something there. So let's go ahead, whoop and get that focal point down. Okay, and then let's see, maybe this rose stamp gracious it takes an act to get this off of the acetate there. My word, look at that. Goodness. Okay. And then our stays on ink. All right. Such a cumbersome image. I might go ink pad to stamp. Then I'm going to stamp right over that blue, oh my goodness, how pretty that is. Very pretty, I love that. Um, I might do another one here, since it's such a pretty image. You don't see that really well, as far as just the stamp goes. But that is a beautiful image. Let's do one right there. Pretty. I mean, of course it doesn't show up as much as that one does because we're on solid um, on the back, but I like that. All right, let's do a little Tim Holtz something, something there, and maybe even there, and maybe some more here. And that's that Tim Holtz Field Notes. Tim Holtz Field Notes <laughs> uh, stamp that I have over here. Let's go ahead and put this up. And get that one out. It's got all kinds of, well, I'll knock something off got all kinds of stuff and I might use that little bird. That is cute. Let's do that. Um, let's go ahead and get that little bird out. Little bird stamp. And let's do him. Uh, 
there. And maybe off stamp him here. Cute. Get that ink off of my mat. We have these non-stick mats in the shop also. Scrapbookingwithme.com link is in my description box below and let's see i need a more defined stamp for the rest so there and maybe there and then Ooh, I like the enclosure. It looks like a um, wax seal. So let's do that one. See, it says enclosure. Make sure we got it covered really good. That's cute. Then maybe at the corner of that one. Very nice. And let's see. Do we have another big number of some kind? I've got them all falling out now. Um, oh, wait, I like this, these little numbers here. Let's do that. Okay, so it's like maybe old serial number or something like that. I like that. And let's kind of ghost it. That's cute. I like that. kind of going crazy with this one because I like how it looks. Yep. That is pretty. It's like it's a canceled check or something. Very cute. I like that. All right. Then let's do some darker inking around the edges. I like that, how that looks. This is black soot. Just to kind of distress it up even more. Make it look like it's got a little bit of like um, newsprint ink on it. Okay, yep, and then let's add a few little focal points in through here. I like that one. Let's get that glue on that one and add it on. I'm not even gonna ink these tiny ones just gonna put them on a few more little focal points and then we will be ready to seal it with the collage barge this is some really thin paper it's probably just copy paper that's on that and then I thought this would be very pretty somewhere yep I like that so let's get some adhesive on that one and get that down then I think I need 
another little piece of something. Hmm. How about this? It's got roses on the edges. And I don't want to cover that up. Remember, Melina. Nah, that's too big. Um. Ooh, I like that, even though it's not roses. I like it. A little bee. It's still nature and something that loves roses. So that works. <laughs> little bee tag. All right. Now... I'm not going to spray. I'm going to dot. Being careful to try not to cover up that whole thing, and I didn't. Okay. All right, and then while that is drying, I don't think I'm going to add black to it. <clears throat> while that's drying, I think I might find another little focal point to go here. That one looks like that one, but a different color. Oh, I like that one. It's a little different color than this one. So let's get that one on. While all of that ink blotting is drying because I've got to have that dry before I add on my collage podge. All right, bringing it down so I don't <laughs> cover that up. There's that. And then that oxide ink is already working. Look at that. How pretty. I love how that oxide ink works. Okay, I am going to leave this alone until all of that ink dries, and then I will come back and get it all sealed with my collage podge. So yeah, we'll be right back. All right, it is dry as far as the ink splatters go, and I was going to show y'all if it I'm going to pull it up just a little bit so you can see how those oxide spots did. I love that. Okay, so I did add a couple of washi stickers and this little piece and stamped here, this little piece there, uh, off camera just because I thought it needed just a little bit of extra something something. So I did that. And I forgot to wipe my stays on off right after I stamped it. So it took a little bit to get it off of my non-stick board. All right, so now we're using some matte collage podge. And we're going to seal this. But it's all going to... Um, dry matte so we don't have to worry about a bunch of shiny stuff and I have not used what I used to call decoupage I have not used that in a very long time and I saw someone making a master board and she sealed it with decoupage and I thought that is what I am going to use my next collage page bottle on. So, here we are. All right, so you're gonna get it just as thick as you want it and then you can rub it off anywhere that you got it maybe too much. And then yes, some of that inking is going to spread elsewhere and 
I'm fine with that. It gives it even more of a um, vintage look. And then my oxide ink, look at that, is spreading around too. I like that look. So I'm good with all that. If you're not, then you might not want to use um, too much ink when you make yours. Okay, I'm gonna try to wipe off so I don't get too much on the back of this, which since it is a stark white um, piece of cardstock, I will probably add something else to the back if I'm gonna use a piece for a journaling card or something. So no worries there either, but I don't want it too sticky on the back. All right, now it is rippling up a little bit on the dictionary page, which is fine. It needs to look aged anyway, so I think I'm going to be good with that. And then after you get everything sealed with your collage page or decoupage or whatever you're using, then you're gonna let this sit one more time. And if anybody is like me, this is like therapy to me. Um, getting all this together, getting it messy and collaging. Collaging in itself is like therapy to me, which I also like to fussy cut too. But there's not that many people that like to fussy cut but I do love to collage. I love just putting things together and making something totally new. And once you get all of those collage pieces together, that's what it is. It's just totally a new piece that you can use some other way that you might not have been able to use the original the same way. Okay, so now I'm just going to get off all of my excess collage podge because everything is sealed now and like I want it. So see, it, it turned everything just a little bit more of that yellowy vintage look because of all of the um, ink that I used because I love to use ink. Now, we do not have these little spatulas in the shop, but we do have a different kind of silicone spatula. These are the best. The little silicone spatulas are the best at spreading around inks, collage page, um, uh, modeling paste, Gesso, yes, this thing is awesome with gesso. And when, you know, if you don't get everything off of it while it's still wet, there is no worries whatsoever. I'm trying to get my other wipe off rag. Um, there's no worries whatsoever because it will um, come off when it is dry. Like before I started using this for this project, I had white gesso all over this. And I just held it over the garbage can and flicked it and little, I mean like great big pieces of gesso just come off. Went to the garbage. So whoever thought of silicone spatulas in crafting and in cooking <laughs> is a genius. I love my silicone spatula. We do have those in the shop at scrapbookingwithme.com. Um, they are called silicone spreaders, I do believe. It's a pack of two. So you can check those out and just put the word silicone in our search box at the top. And um, that will pull them up for you. All right, so you cannot see probably with on the camera at the gorgeousness that this is right now, but it is so pretty. All of that 
has been kind of intermingled together. It is so pretty. I'm gonna get some of these little streaks out here before they completely dry. It's just streaks of my collage podge. It's not anything that can't come out. Yep, they come right out. That's good. All right, so now you will need to let this dry. And I know some people are thinking, especially people that don't collage, they're thinking, why in the world is she spending all this time? Like I said, it's therapy. I like doing this. If you don't like doing this, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, but I like doing this. Um, also, when we get done with it, I mean, you could do this on a huge scale. You could do this on 12 by 12 cardstock. You could find cardstock or paper or whatever that's even bigger. Oh, the um, craft color wrapping paper. You could do a big piece of that and collage the whole thing. That would be so pretty. Um, you could also use this once it is dry, not cut it up at all, and use it as a journal cover. Look at that. Oh my. Oh my, I just gave myself a really, really, really good idea. Y'all, I was going to cut this up and use all kinds of different ones for, like, cut this piece here and use it as some kind of die cut tag, something like that. And then this huge piece here with Old Testament in it. But the more I look at it, I need to put a little bit more collage pies right up there. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I think I've got a huge idea for this. All right, I put some more collage pies on that. And I might have to put on a little bit more, but look turning this i'll have to put some more there too covering the back side up and turning this like this this would be your journal cover it about takes my breath away i love it so much yeah i can't cut this one up <laughs> it's gonna be a journal cover the rose on the back and it could be the journal cover of a um, like a flower journal, study of flowers and doing pictures of flowers and then journaling about them and collaging with roses and things like that on the pages. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's almost set out just perfect because it's got that down the center spine. Oh yes. That's what this is going to be. All right, I'm going to add a little more collage polish to some of these pieces that are coming up. And then I'm gonna show you how it looks dry at the very end of this video. And then I do believe I just can't cut this one up. I mean, this is my very first one. That's pretty pitiful that I can't cut up my very first one, but it's laid out almost perfectly for a journal cover. So I think I, that's what I'm gonna have to do. All right, so I've got a little bit coming up on the edge here. So I'm just gonna kind of dabble my collage page in between there and then lay it down and get it all sealed up there. Oh my, yep, I had all, all intentions of, I had all intentions of covering this, I mean, cutting this one out. And I just cannot do it. <laughs> it's just so pretty, it's gonna work so pretty 
for a journal cover. So I just can't do it. Let's see if I got any more coming up. No, that's pretty good on that side. Let's see on this side. That's all you gotta do really is just go around the edges and make sure that everything is laying down good and that it is sealed really good to your uh, backer paper or cardstock, whatever you used. All right, so I got a little bit of tearing going on right there. I'm just gonna go under with my collage podge. All right, so now I'm not going to bend it anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it flat <laughs> to dry. And then I will come back and show you what it looks like all set and dry. And uh, then I will definitely give you an answer as to how I'm going to use it. Okay, y'all, it is dry and it is gorgeous. Okay, so it's cardstock on the back. I mean, it is solid. It is a solid project. I just love it. And yes, I am going to use it as a journal cover. I mean, look at that. How pretty. I'm going to see if I can pull it up to the screen and it focus. Okay. I love it. Love it. Love it. And I am going to really love it as a journal cover. I just cannot bring myself to cut up my first master board. It is going to be a journal cover. I really love that. And you can kind of manipulate it how you want. Then, So that would be the back of my journal cover. And then there is the front. I just love how this turned out. So, uh, if you have made a master board, I apologize for the moving of the camera, sorry. Uh, if you have made a master board before, let me know how yours turned out, and let me know if you cut up your very first master board, because <laughs> I'm just a weenie. I, I don't want to cut this one up. I want it to be a journal cover, a nature journal cover. So let me know um, how you like the master board idea here. Um, I am planning on, Aaron Jonas is eating his lunch in the kitchen as you can hear. I'm planning on um, making this a monthly video and doing different themes, you know, different scraps because I have so many scraps, different scraps every month and uh, doing a monthly master board video. So y'all let me know what you think about that idea. Thank you for sticking around through all of this because I know in the beginning you were questioning if this was gonna turn out to be anything and I think it turned out beautiful. I love it. So thank y'all for sticking around. I'll have you some up close and personal still shots at the end. So be sure to keep watching and y'all have a blessed day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye y'all.